Okay, so we talked about DMX, what it is, and the basic signal flow of how to get it plugged in. Mm -hmm. But how do you tell that signal to tell each light what to do? Sure. Because it, it seems like it's just sort of one signal path, but there's a lot of stuff going on. So how does it know yeah. what, what you're, it's supposed to do? What you're asking about is the DMX address, which okay. you know, for anybody listening that maybe is more computer savvy than they are light, lighting savvy, you've probably heard the term IP, IP address before. Very similar thing where we have uh, DMX addresses. Yeah, so every device that our light, we want our lighting console to talk to has to have a DMX address associated with, with it somewhere. You say device, though. You're not just talking about lights. Exactly. It could be anything, a media server, a fog machine, anything we want our lighting console to be able to talk to. So you know, one DMX cable has the ability to transmit one DMX universe. And we'll get into uh, the universes a little bit more in another video. But each universe has 512 DMX addresses in that universe. So a lot of times you've probably heard of it referred to as DMX 512. Yep. That's because of the amount of addresses you have on uh, each universe and one DMX cable has the ability to send one DMX universe. So with the different devices, what we have to do is tell them in that range of one to 512, where do you fall? Okay. And that's how each device knows that, you know, when the lighting console is sending out signal, uh, just broadcasting it down that DMX line, that's how each device knows uh, what it's specifically listening to to be able to do its thing. And each light may not necessarily have the same amount of addresses. Correct. So, you know, we've got a conventional here, just a, a regular, you know, source four par. Uh, so all this does is, is dim on and off. And we've got the dimmer here. So this light would plug into one channel of this dimmer. So let's say that I, I address this dimmer pack at DMX address 101, 101. That means that this light, and if it's plugged into channel one on this dimmer pack, it's going to be brought up by DMX address 101. Okay. The next one will be DMX address 102. The next address will be DMX 103. So the amount of DMX addresses needed by an individual device is strictly determined by how many features in that device need to be individually controllable. Ah, so, so because since, this only has one fixture plugged into one dimmer, that's only one DMX address. Correct. So this this dimmer would only have a total of six addresses. Yes. Total of six is the most it would ever have. And you know, in a pinch, when I've been short on DMX addresses, I've even overlapped certain things before. So let's say if I'm using this six channel dimmer pack, but I only need one channel out of it, and I, I address this dimmer pack at 101, well then the second one would be 102, but I, as long as I don't have fixtures plugged into this, I could technically overlap and save some DMX channels. I don't recommend that, but in a pinch it works. So that's dimmers. You know, the next thing we have here is a, um, you know, an RGB par or RGBW par. Um, I don't know the different ranges of this one off the top of my head, but um, most pars like this, so if it's RGBW, which means red, green, blue, and white LEDs in it, then each one of those is gonna need at least one DMX channel to operate it. Um, you know, red would be a, a channel, blue would be a channel, green would be a channel, white would be a channel. And then one like this that also has automated zoom in it is gonna be a, another channel. You know, next to us, we have the Martin Aura, which I'm more familiar with. Um, I don't know for a fact, these use between 14 and 25 DMX channels. Okay. Why, why so the, many? Why the difference and why so many? So you see me moving the light here. This is tilt. That's going to require a minimum of one DMX channel. And I emphasize minimum. I'll come back to that here in a second. Then you have pan, which is going to be at least one other DMX channel. Then because this is an LED fixture, again, you have red, green, blue, amber, white LEDs. Um, this light also has the ability to strobe. It has the ability to zoom. So all those features are what gets us up to that first minimum of 14 DMX channels to control all that. Most moving lights, or just most intelligent lighting period, also has what's called a control channel, which if you need to reset the light remotely, because let's say it's messing up, it has the ability to do that. Um, the reason there's a, a range is using pan and tilt as an example. So you need at least one for each of those. Yeah. Um, we want to be able to do 8-bit and 16-bit panning and tilting, yeah. And Whoa, some other things, yes. <laughs> so uh, a better way to say that is maybe fine and coarse. So okay. a lot of times you just need to be able to use coarse tilt to make big movements. If you need to make a super fine adjustment, then you want to be able to use 16-bit pan or tilt. And there's other fixtures within a lot of these lights that use 8-bit versus 16-bit. And that's where you end up using minimum two DMX channels to control the same feature, just in different ways. So low resolution. High resolution. Exactly. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay, so um, I'm going to take a test here, and you can right. give me a grade. So dimmer pack over here, as many as six addresses, not channels. Those are different, right? Correct. Okay, and then let's just say for fun, this one's five. Mm -hmm. 
And then this one is 14. Yes. Okay, so address 1 through 6, mm -hmm. 7 through 12, mm -hmm. 13 through 27. Yeah, you got it. Good math. Ah. There you go. Okay. And then, you know, we'll, we'll get into universes a little bit more, but you can have fixtures. If you have multiple universes, you can have fixtures with the same address throughout your system as long as they're on different universes because all of them have that 1 through 512 uh, DMX range. You touched on channels a second ago. That's a part I think confuses people sometimes too, is DMX addresses and channels are two different things. Um, you know, back in the day when we had, you know, just giant dimmer rack systems in, in uh, venues, we would sub sometimes have what's called a hard patch. This might be similar to a stage box or a patch panel for audio, you know, where if you have a sub snake that says one through eight on it, that doesn't mean, you know, that channel one on that subsnake is channel one on your console, right? Right. Because you have a physical patch to change it. We're not seeing the hard patches nearly as much uh, nowadays as we used to, but that's where we would go, okay, well, this pack is DMX address one through six, but I want it to show up at channel 47 on my console. So I'm going to take one through six and plug it into channel 47 going to the console. Got it. What's more popular nowadays is what we'd call a soft patch, where we have the DMX addresses, but then within the console, we're telling it, okay, DMX address this, I'm actually going to refer to you as this channel because it makes more sense for my console layout. You know, we don't want you, you went through and said one through six and seven through 12 and 13 through 24. If I only have three of these auras in my rig, I don't remember, I don't want to remember that they're channel 13, channel 25 and channel, you know, whatever right. that next one would be. Yeah. Um, I want to know that they're fixtures one, two, and three or 101 and 102 and 103 or whatever makes the most sense to me. Okay, so if I have eight auras mm -hmm. and they're 14 addresses each, not channels, mm -hmm. can I have all eight of them be address one through 14? You can, but it, you would never really want to. You know, you know, for things like color, it might work if you just know, oh, I always want all these fixtures to be the same color. That would work. Your issue is going to become pan and tilt. Even if you know, you say, oh, I always want them to be straight and move together, you know, lots of stuff can affect the actual pan and tilt position um, of a fixture from exactly how it's hung, to you know, the voltage going to the stepper motors to all kinds of little nuances. And you also talked about the actual patching being similar to an audio snake. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there might be a, a, an instance where I would want one through six of my drums patched one through six, and then a different instrument because mm -hmm. of a patch problem or something, I might put my bass there, and then the toms ah. later on. So it's like if I have 12 channels of drums, it's not always one through 12. Is that the way this works? So yes and no. And, and I'm gonna talk about it two different ways. If I have six auras, six of these moving lights uh, on one universe, I can put each one of those kind of wherever I want to on that universe. So we can have space fixture to fixture, but you can't have space between DMX addresses within one fixture. So I can't have pan and tilt at DMX address one and two, and then move color up to six and so on and so forth. The way we do that, you pick your starting address for that particular device. Okay. And then you tell that device, this is your starting address, and then it knows I use this many channels to do everything I need to do. So from there to 14 exactly. or 25 or however many later, exactly. it's dedicated to that fixture. So you're not patching 14 addresses, you're giving it the first address and it's taking up what it needs. Correct. Okay, so what happens if you mess that up and the next aura, it's set to 13? Yeah, so you've got some overlap or something. The way that's most noticeable is when you go through and test your system and you try and control one light and you realize that I'm also controlling another light in the process. Or if there's an overlap like that, say let's see, there's not even an overlap, but you're just off on your addressing, you may see the fixture do some things, but it's not doing the right things. Okay. Almost always you can troubleshoot that down to a DMX address issue, whether an overlap with another fixture, a duplicate DMX address where you know this one is patched at DMX address one and so is another. Um, or maybe you were aiming to patch it at DMX stress 143 and you ended up at 144. So you have some functionality, but not the right functionality. Okay, so you know, Daniel, us audio guys have these things called patch sheets. Mm -hmm. You guys <laughs> should think about using those. We have those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have those, uh, I, I'd say it this way. Has, every event have you ever done, have you always had a patch sheet? I mean, <laughs> it would have been nice. You know, uh, maybe we'll do another dip video about this, but the paperwork side of lighting is crucially important. And I think it's one that uh, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily keep up with. In the days of digital, where you can go to your lighting console and just see it, we've gotten out of the habit of having that paperwork. And I think that's a bad habit to break. You should always have some sort of master patch sheet saying what your fixture is, what that fixture channel is, because that's different than your DMX address. 
and then what your DMX address is for that fixture. A lot of modern consoles give you the ability to print that out from the console software. So there's really no excuse not to have it. Cool, that's great.